Thank you once again to our wonderful panelists. I think we all have a lot to ponder about, a lot to think about. And um, with that, we come to the end of today's proceedings. And I warmly welcome Dr. Madhupashini to uh, deliver the vote of thanks. So um, my thanks to the panel. It was really encouraging, and it was an educational thing as well to hear what you said. Prabha, if I had thought like that, I wouldn't have translated a sentence <laughs> of the whole book that I'm 100% sure. But it was wonderful to see that, you know, that kind of analysis. And um, extremely wonderful, and something that Sumati said. You know, we do not realize how little our own people can read each other. And that is crucial, no? I mean, if we are killing each other for God's sake, at least read each other so that we know what we are doing. It's, it's incredible that we forget that our own people don't know what the best writers of that particular culture is writing because we only hear the mass media and like the burghers will not know what the Tamils or the Muslims are writing, and we forget how crucial that might have been if we were to think of moving even an inch closer together. And the writers I have picked were, they are not writing underground, they are multiple national award-winning writers. And this is what they say. And they are saying it openly, bravely, and very, okay, symbolically as well. But that was a crucial thing I wanted you know, Dan, I'm really glad other people outside are reading, but our people inside should also know what each other is writing because it's only through that, that method where we learn about each other that we can hope for any kind of understanding and not very surface level, like not a Kandyan dancer dancing Bharatanatyam, no. It has to be internal, and for me, the most internal thing is literature because you change minds and you change hearts. So that is one of the reasons that I'm really glad this, this came out. Um, two things, I, it's a vote of thanks, but I'm going to use Minna a little bit to explain some things about the book. It is thematic, definitely. It's thematic because, uh, as Amaraya said, cleverly done. Also, it was part of my PhD program, so I, there was a theme. And if I had the time, in fact, I discussed this, Compendiums like this, I could do a similar one on feminist literature in Sri Lanka. I could do a similar one on leftism or Marxism. Possible, and there are so many who are not included here. So canon making is always political. It's always subjective. And we need to realize that. So here, I kind of chose the people I thought could be represented. There could easily be others. And if it was a feminist collection, I can imagine who would, I could have included more, but it was a particular theme because there had to be a perspective, otherwise, Amaraya, it would have been impossible. Who do you pick? So you need a parameter for choice, and this happened to be connected to my PhD, if, if, if uh, that comes out, that's a theoretical part of what you see practically here, if I manage to, because they also accepted that. If I manage to finish it in time, PhD is over, but the publication I have to cut two-thirds down from my PhD thesis for them to accept this. Because Asanka said, I don't think they'll ever give me that do whatever you want thing again. So I have to make it 90,000 words. Right now it's 300,000. So let's see if I can do that. So that's about the book. Um, the second thing I want to say, so many people to thank. Right, and I'll start by um, the three people I dedicated this work to. One of them is here, Thisa Jayatilaka. Parvati Nagasundaram, and Professor Yoshiko Ashiva. And if you read the dedication page, those three names come, and they come because they were pivotal in opening doors for me I thought had closed. So starting with my degree, ending with my PhD, if those three people hadn't been there, I know I wouldn't be here. So Professor Chaitilaka, I know it was part of your job but when I got the chance to do my master's, I had thought that door had closed for me as well because I did my first degree in India. There are 
problems that you can never overcome. And then for me to have that chance to go to New York, meet, you know, I met Salman Rushdie, Amitav Ghosh, all of them, because New York was the, even Toni Morrison, I managed to go for a reading. Incredible, so those chances at NYU, I mean, I know it's not a personal thing you did, but because you were there, I had that chance, and I will never forget that. So thank you, sir. So this is the only way I could think of thanking you by dedicating this to you as well. Um, Parvati Nagasundaram, she couldn't be here today. She got me into the English department as a lecturer. That, that was enough. Again, I had problems with my th three-year degree. She fought for me. So she got me in. And the last one, Professor Ashiva, was my supervisor for my PhD. Incredible woman, incredible researcher, who wasn't scared of boundaries breaking. Interdisciplinary here in Sri Lanka is not very encouraged. People tend to have a lot of borders. So if you do want to do really weird stuff, which I keep doing, it helps to have a supervisor who is not scared of you know being different or people being different. So to the three people I have dedicated this work, thank you, I'm glad you're here, sir. Um, right, I, I never write my speeches, but today I did, because I do tend to sometimes forget. So the process, next would be Professor Sasanka Pereira, because this process of putting the work, work together, it was part of my PhD, and my supervisors were Japanese or British. They couldn't read the work. So I was thinking, just as I, just as I, uh, I'm just theorizing. I wish they could read the work, and I had be begun translating. And my campus had a 60th anniversary exhibition. Professor Chitra would know. And they had asked. Professor Sampa Tamaratunga was the vice chancellor then. He told me, do something, you know, show something. You're one of the writers we have. So I said, the only, and I was on study leave then. And I said, the only thing I have right now is a collection of translations. Let me see if I can put it together. And I did. Luckily for me, I did not know Professor Sasanka very well, but I had, we were in touch for some other reason. I think it was his book. I was reading a lot of anthropology as well. And I asked him, sir, I have, I have done this. Would you like to have a look? And would you do me the honor of writing a forward or writing something about it? And he did. So he's one of those academics who really help, I won't say young, but new people <laughs> to, 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 to come up, and he did. And he was based in um, India, and through our conversations, Kaushali Kumara Singh is a friend of mine, he was in India. Through our conversations, he, he put it across that if you want readership in English, get it here, get it to India. Because that has a huge readership in English. And if I had written to Rutledge, I mean, I would still be waiting for an answer, but he wrote and said, I, there's this collection, I think it's worth looking at. Can you look at it? And they did. In fact, he asked three people, uh, Orient Black Swan, Bloomsbury, Rutledge. His name is powerful enough for all three to immediately send me proposals, what do you have sent. He helped me at every stage. And then it took about a year to, and I wasn't, stressed out because I was doing my PhD and that was a different stress. So I was just forgetting about it. Two people accepted it. Bloomsbury didn't get back to me. Rutledge accepted it. Um, Orient Black Swan accepted it. And I accepted Rutledge. And then Orient Black Swan was a bit upset. He saved me again there. <laughs> he got involved. And um, so this, and Orient um, Rutledge, the three people, the head of uh, Rutledge India, Shashank Singha, lovely man, um, the person in charge of me, Antara Ray Chaudhary, and the other person who directly dealt with me, uh, Anvita Bajaj. Very, very nice people to work with. I had never met them. So this collection was there. And then the Easter bombings happened in Sri Lanka. Now, mind you, my research was post-war Sri Lanka. And this was going, and the Easter bombings happened while these discussions were going, and we had signed a contract. And then, about a year after, Eric wrote a collection of short stories, which had stunning work, seriously stunning work. Um, and I read that because I kept on reading. And there was a story called Bhikshu Art Tour, which is 
uh, from the perspective of a Buddhist monk who was in the hospital when the victims of the Easter bombings had come in. I mean, if anyone has read Eric, you know how he writes. This was such a stunner, such a masterpiece. And you know, when you're a translator, Prabha, when you see something, you're immediately translating anyway. And I then very quietly asked them, is it possible for me to add one more story? Right? No, I knew I had gone over the word limit. And then they said, can we talk to you? Just next, next email, can we speak with you? So we had a meeting with this head and Antara and Anvita. And they said, we have a choice. We have to either tell you to cut down. Oh, no, they sent me an email and saying, how many more are you going to add to this? And I said, I hope to God no more because I don't want anything else to happen. You know, this happened because the Easter bombings and he wrote maybe nine months after it because it takes time for us to process. So I said, I hope no more because I don't want anything else going wrong in my country. Then they called a meeting and said, so actually Eric is pivotal in how it was upgraded. They said, we can either ask you to cut down or we can ask you to go up. So I said, what do you mean go up? Then they said, we are willing to make it a Rutledge companion. And at that time, I did not know what that meant, <laughs> seriously. I said, what do you mean Rutledge companion? Right? Then they said, no, at that level. And they asked me this question, I never forget. They asked me, are you scared? Right? Then I realized, OK, <laughs> what that means. Then I said, no, I'm not, because I'm doing my PhD on this. So I have spent years. The whole first year was reading literature, singular literature. I can handle it, but you have to give me permission to add more so that I can be fairer. Because I had picked seven for my PhD. Then they said, this line is so beautiful. If it's a Rutledge companion, you have no rules. Do what you want. So I spent more months reading and added the five I uh, mentioned in the, in the, in, like earlier, because then Ajit Tilakasena was born in the 1930s, I think and Kaushala Kumara Singh in the 1980s. So there are this spectrum of writers. As Amaraya said, no, it's not representative. But on that particular team, pretty representatives. Because all of them have taken a particular stand about the exclusive nationalism, and they have stood by it, not just in their writing, but probably in their lives as well. But I'll, theorizing I'll do in my PhD work, hopefully that will come out. So that's what happened. So I thank the Rutledge, Sashank, Antara, and Anvita for taking it up. I thank Professor Sasanka Pereira, who opened doors not just to me and others. Because when Orient Black Swan was a bit uh, sour with me for not giving any other work, and then Reverend had Goom ready, so the doors opened. And he put them in touch, and now uh, Orient Black Swan signed a contract with Reverend Rahula. Beautiful novel called Gum. That's coming out. So that's there. And then I have to thank my university. It's an incredible place to be, University of Srijadhanapura. They, they allow people like me to exist, seriously, Somati, to, to actually do things I do, and not just on literature, on my English for Fun project, which some of you know about. They carry the work I do in the library, and it's going national. So they allow weirdness to come in, and I'm really lucky for that. I have to thank Professor Sampat Amaratunga, who wanted me to do a book for the exhibition, the Professor Shiranta Kenda. At that point, he was the head of the Innovation, Invention, and Venture Creation Council, which gave grants for the exhibition. And for that money, I could pay the writers, the first seven original writers, not seven, I think it was nine. Then the writers themselves, you know, the five who are, six who are here, and the other people who allowed me that uh, translation. For the photograph, I have to, um, Sumati, can I have your book? Rutledge had, thank you so much. Rutledge had the uh, default photographs, which was, they told me to choose something. If you have seen a Rutledge book, you would know what they look like. And I didn't like any of that. And I told Professor Asanka, what do I do? I can't pick anything. It doesn't seem to fit. And he said, you put your foot down. You say, can I send a photograph? And I did ask. I would never have had the courage till he said. And then they said, fine. Give us a photograph, and we'll consider it. So I had a friend. He, again, like me, has broken his ankle. I fell on the stairs a few days ago. So 
This picture is by Situmini Ratanamalala, and he, he is a super photographer and allowed me to use anything I wanted from his album. So this was his, and he just allowed it free, and they liked it, and they picked it. So this has a very Sri Lankan kind of touch to it, simply because they allowed me to use my own photograph. The design is set for the Rutledge Companion, but the photograph is totally uh, the, the Sri Lankan. And Situmini Ratanamalala, he's a senior lecturer at Morato. He isn't here, but all that. And then this, this is where I have to thank Amendra and Chandu Haputantri and you know, Sarasavi, Mr. Premasiri Haputantri, because, and, and I'm so glad this, your wife is also here. Um, see, once it was published abroad, and I realized that the price was 190 pounds, when I first heard that, I typed on my computer and I got, at that time, 84,000 rupees. Then I typed it on my phone. I still got 84,000 rupees. <laughs> and I think I typed it on another computer. And I was like, what do you mean? I mean, who, I mean, it, it was, it came down during the COVID time, so it was really 84,000 rupees, right? And I was like, who is going to buy a book at that price? And that was it. So then I realized, they told me no rules, but every time I added a right, the price went up. I forgot that. Anyway, so I have never yet seen that book. It's probably the most expensive Sri Lankan writer's book ever, I think, for now. And then India published. My copy that my mother is holding is an Indian copy. It was 2,000 Indian rupees, and they gave me four of that. And only four. So I put one into the Colombo Public Library, one into my university library, so you can borrow any one, and two I kept for myself. And um, wonder where Taranga? Is Taranga here? Ah, it's here. Thank you. And then I was thinking, thanks, everybody. I was thinking, how do I get this book to Sri Lankan readers? Because that was the whole point. How do I get people like Sumati or Tracy Holsinger or someone reading what we write? Okay, and then I had been in, in um, conversation with Mr. Bijitayapa as well, but that didn't work out. Then I asked Chandu and I asked Amendra, who said, let's see whether we can do it. And Amendra is contacted the people in India, got this done. So it's, 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 I'm so happy Sarasavi got involved. Right, and um, you know, Chandu and Amendra, if not for y'all, this wouldn't be in Sri Lanka. And I'm so glad that, you know, and that Sarasavi, you know, that actually bothered to do that. There was a lot of work. I'm sure they had to pay in dollars and do all that. So Rutlet published it, but it's distributed by Sarasavi. So I thank all four of you for actually getting this book here because it means so much to have it in Sri Lanka. It wouldn't have happened without you. Thank you very much for that. Okay, then, um, right about this launch itself. I needed an academic thing and I was wondering where to have it. And I realized I had a friend here, Dr. Minna Tahir, and I asked her, I did not know anyone at BS, BCIS otherwise, and she said, she, let's meet. She's the one who showed it to the executive director, Professor Garmini Kirewalla. Because I didn't know him, I didn't want to walk in and say, is this something you can do? She did, she asked him. They called me for a meeting, and immediately, and I was so glad, immediately they saw the value of the book and said, let's do this, right? Because I, mean, I was wondering whether no one saw the value of this, but you and the BCIS, I don't think they do launches at all, so this is a seminar, but the fact that you bother to do it means so much. And Taranga, I'm not sure where she is, who did all the, Coordinating with, thank you very much, and it happened beautifully, so I'm really very grateful. Um, talk to me enough to you. Right, then one thing I have to do, which is the only ceremonial thing I'm doing, is to thank my family. And I'll start with my parents, my father and my mother, and I want to present them with the first copy I bought here. Can the two of you bring them up, Mitu and Sajani? So uh, to my father, Professor J.B. Disanayaka, my mother, Mrs. Kusum Disanayaka, who is a writer herself, poet, um, both of them, the legacy I have got is totally because of my background at home. And the two of them have been pivotal in uh, making me who I am. And I'm very aware my ideology is not my father's often, but he still handles it well. So can I please have them up to present this?
And then my nuclear family, my daughters, Mitaha Sini and Sajani Ratnayaka, my husband, Pradeep Ratnayaka, for my PhD and my work like this, honestly, they paid the highest price, honestly. Because as people said, it's a mammoth work, it was. It also meant my time went. So that mentally, physically, I may have been there, but mentally, I wasn't. And how they handle their life is a different thing altogether. So Pradeep was very much a father for them when I had mentally disappeared. But there's always a cost. So I'm very, very glad that this family was there to support me. Still is. I have another book due in a month's time. I haven't even started working it. So Pradeep, Sajani, Mitu, thank you very much. Right, then Suramya, who is the moderator here, Suramya. We got connected with this English for Fun project. Every last Saturday of the month, both of us go to the Colombo Public Library and read English stories and poems to children. It's a project I'm doing. It's after my own heart, and she's one of them. And she's volunteering for all this. I'm so glad that uh, you compared this and put such style and polish into the proceedings. And finally, Professor Saumya, Professor Prabha, Professor Sumati, Professor Sasanka for the panel discussion, for the moderation. It was such an honor to have you actually speak about the book. I'm very glad, it's bad at forgetting names. If I have forgotten anyone, forgive me. Finally, all of you, uh, Father Tilina, we met with the Aquinas Prize giving. They invited me, and I had a glimpse of a world I didn't know. Thank you for coming today. And Ravana Batuangala was here. Friends, thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest in coming. I'm extremely grateful that you are here. Harshana Rambukwala, you were very much part of this process, though you refused to come and talk here today. But I'm glad you were in Sri Lanka for this short time to actually come here. So I thank you all. There is tea outside to all my friends who are here. I am so glad you are with me for this evening. Thank you very much.